Hey, hey, Chris. Hey, Craig. How you doing, guys? Good. How are you? Hey, Jason. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully, guys, anyone who's watching this, hopefully you can take a lot from it. But um, the, the best and easiest place to start um, is um, how did this all begin? How did OP begin for you guys? So pretty much I play like a high level uh, uh, soccer player in the United States. And it was basically just kind of overuse where I was practicing like five, six times a week for like multiple hours of my team. We were getting ready for a big national tournament and I was just like playing like a, a lot and just one day pretty much I just started feeling pain in my pelvis and it started off where the pain would come like after I guess I'd, or a little bit during but then mostly after and it got to the point where it just kind of kept building up to the point where I was waking up the next morning and I was like barely able to kind of get out of bed like roll over just because the pain would be so much and then nothing I went to like numerous like doctors. I went to a doctor, I went to a hip doctor, I went to a chiropractor, a sports hernia specialist. I got, I'm getting, I got PRP shots, I got cortisone shots, and like, and then I rested too, and then literally like nothing was working. And then, um, and then we found you, and then we did the whole process, and then, oh, I feel, oh. Uh, yeah, and the frustrating thing from, is I would talk to Chris, and they'd always say, okay, you got to give it rest. So he would give it rest, and at the beginning it might have been three weeks or, or four weeks, um, but it kept coming back, mm -hmm. and nothing was correcting. And it was, it was extremely frustrating, obviously, for Chris, but as a parent, you know, we didn't know what to do. And we'd go to the specialist, as he said. We went to specialists. We went to uh, you know, physical therapists. We went to all these doctors, and we just kept hearing rest, 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 and it wasn't going away. It was also frustrating, too, because I, I would go on the Internet, and once we kind of figured out it was osteitis pubis, we had figured it out. But then it literally, like, no doctors, no one, like, knew how to basically fix it. So I basically, I knew kind of, like, what the problem was, but I had no idea how to fix it. So I was just kind of doing a lot of the stuff the doctors were telling me, like, it was a lot of, like, ab exercises. When I was doing those, I was like, it's still hurting, like, this isn't. This isn't really working. And you were like, no, no, don't do yeah. that exercise. <laughs> don't do any ab exercise. So, so it was kind of, we didn't know what to do, uh -huh. right? I mean, at the end of the day, we literally didn't know what to do because we were being told from different people to do different things. And somehow we came across you on the internet and it was, it was a godsend. So anyway, really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, before, before we jump into anything else, um, uh, just like, I guess, because people are going through this, like, Talk a little bit about that, that headspace that you're in. Like, so you're at the doctor's like, and, and they're, t they're telling you rest, and you're trying rest, and it's not working. You're trying this new exercise, and it's not working, and you're Googling every day. Like, like what's your spirit like at that point, Chris? Like, like where, where's your heart? What are you, wh what are you going through? It was, it was just, like, frustrating. It's just because, like, you know what the problem is, but you just you can't, like, fix it. And no matter what I was doing, everything was still hurting. And I was kind of getting down. And, like, towards the end, I literally went to the doctor, and they were just like, like, we don't, like, know, like, what to do. So I, I got to the point where I basically had, like, almost given up, like, hope that I'd even ever, like, play soccer again until I, we found you. And then once our that first session we had where I called you up and then you – you threw all these facts at me for 30 minutes and I was like it was so much in my head but it finally felt like I felt like relieved almost that like and I felt like actually like hope that like okay I, I watch the trials I see these other people can conquer it and then I know like I could too. It, it was probably the I'm sorry it's probably yeah. the worst feeling I've ever experienced um, after going through all these doctors and if you remember we were in, in, in orthopedic surgeon's um, office and, and she's like it's OP and we said, well, what, what are we supposed to do? And she basically said, you know, it could be, you know, rest. It could be six weeks. It could be two years. And she said, it's a very difficult. And I remember you started almost crying. You mm -hmm. put your shirt over your head. Um, and, and as a father, right, I was like, uh, you know, what are we supposed to do? He's trained his whole life, you know, to play in college and hopefully, you know, beyond and be told that you know, it could be two years before he could actually get better. It, it was really it was terrible, and, and she said uh, she called up a specialist uh, that she works with, and they were doing some some new surgery where they were going to actually, you know, they proposed doing the surgery where they're going to scrape kind of the pelvis area, you know, to help with the inflammation and everything else. And I'm like, we're not doing this 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 you know this surgery, and, and so we literally had nowhere else to go, and to see him almost crying, right, is just as a father worst feeling that anybody can go through.
And, and it's too good. Oh, you can go ahead. Oh, uh, no, you go. You go, Chris. Oh, um, to like, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, that I worked so hard, like all my life trying to make it to this high level. And then I get, I get to the collegiate level, but I, I'm still trying to go pro, obviously. But I get to this collegiate level and just felt like all, like, everything I had worked for was basically kind of just thrown out the window now to where I was like, my dreams were kind of like, it almost felt like crushed. And that was kind of like really frustrating. It was like hard on me. I, I think, yeah, that's, that's exactly, I, I think for, for guys who don't like, obviously no Chris, um, like, you know, he has spent his life like working at something here and you can tell by just his work ethic when it came to his rehab as well. Um, but it, OP doesn't happen to bad athletes. It doesn't happen to people who aren't like pushing their body, not necessarily like to your level where you're wanting to be a pro, but even just, you know, really intense runners who love running. Um, it doesn't happen to bad athletes. You almost have to be strong enough, fast enough, um, like, you know, muscly enough to, to actually pull your, your pubic bone apart kind of thing. So it's almost like this punishment. It's like, oh, you've worked so hard and now here's OP. Here's, here's like your reward for all the hard work that you've put into your body. Um, and it's funny, like I never had OP, I had lower back pain, but it was a different, it was a chronic pain that was horrible, but it wasn't the same. I wasn't that kind of athlete you were. I was never pushing as hard or taking care of my body the same way as you were. So it's always hard for me to really get my head around this idea of you're doing all the right things. You're trying to, you know, you're training, you're following, you're pushing your body, you're, you're trying to be a good athlete. And then for your body to just give up on you almost, um, it must just be yeah, gut wrenching. Yeah, that's that's pretty much the only way to put it. It's just I was pretty much crushed. I remember walking out of the doctor. And I was like, I was for almost pretty much positive that like I was never gonna step foot on a field again. And then and then I talked to you though, and I remember my roommate uh, after after we had our first session. Uh, my roommate came in. He was like, "This is the first. This is like the biggest I think I've seen you smile in like <laughs> during, like three four months." Uh, let's, let's go into that. So it was really unique because um, it was the first time I did a three-way call because you were in Memphis uh, at mm -hmm. uni um, and then you were back here in Atlanta, right? I'm pointing to yep. like you too, yeah. So um, I, I did a three-way call um, with, with these guys um, and we emailed back and forth a fair bit and Craig kind of like grilled me with a bunch of questions um, to just get as much info as he could. Um, so as we're dialing in, right, and we're going through this and you were eating a burrito because you hadn't eaten all day. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was what was like so what was kind of going through your head as I was like because obviously like like I was like you're saying Chris I just throw so much information in there because it's such a complicated thing what was like um coming into the session like what were you expecting like what was your I guess it's such a weird concept the idea of someone treating you over the internet like how does that work like what were you kind of expecting out of that first session like jumping in there um, I was kind of, to be honest, I, I wasn't all that sure just because every other doctor I had talked to, nothing really seemed to be working. So I was like, I was kind of unsure how I felt about doing someone that lives completely across the world on how, how, um, how, like, I guess putting my faith in you. But then I watched the, I watched all the testimonies and that really, I kind of watched those people and I was like, they're situation basically sounds the exact same as like mine so I was like all right I can I'm like these people I this guy like knows what he's doing and then he kind of threw he threw all that info and then we did the assessment too and basically like I remember you were you did told me to do um what was it squats and stuff or uh, squats uh deadlifts and we did the ab we are we yeah. or what was that assessment we did yeah we just did different exercise and you were all that related to OP, and I literally, like, I remember I couldn't do, like, any of them pretty much. And you were just like, yeah, this is OP. It was a classic case. Yeah, yeah, it was a classic case. Yeah. Yeah. In some ways, I was so discouraged. I had set my expectations so low that yeah. no one could go up. <laughs> uh -huh. So when we were talking to you, I'm like, we'll, we'll try anything. Yeah. So, um, and unfortunately, it was the best, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes that we've ever had. So. Mm -hmm. uh, um, no, it was it was fun. It was interesting, kind of bouncing back between. It's it's funny, right? Because it's like, yeah, it was Chris's injury, but like you were like Craig, you were right there the whole time with it. Like you, you both kind of went through it at the same time. Um, so yeah, it was really interesting um, to just see uh, how I've done so. I did so much research on uh, on the and there's not a lot a lot of. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there on what it is, but not how to cure it. So, you know, I, I guess my questions were really trying to drive to how are we going to cure this thing? We know what it is, but, you know, everything we had tried up until that point wasn't helping. 
right? And, and the rest we knew wasn't helping. So I, maybe it was some of the frustrations where my questions were coming from, but it was like, where do we go? It's funny, right? Because there, there's a lot of information as to what OP is, but I really feel like, and you, you could probably answer this question better, I really feel like there isn't a lot of information as to what causes OP. Like, as in, what are the mechanics? What is it that actually, like, because in my head, and, like, you would have noticed the first thing I did was, like, here is an assessment of you, here is what your body does, and if we just like take that a few steps, if you do that when you're running, that's going to break your pelvis. If you do that when you're kicking, that's going to break your pelvis. I feel like there's a lot of information on what OP is, there's not a lot of information on what causes OP. What do, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, that's exactly, I felt like all the doctors I kind of talked to in the U.S., they were just kind of trying to like treat, treat my lower kind of abdomen area. They weren't really trying to focus on what was like causing the actual problem so they were just kind of treating it but like and then that was end up being like the cause i had the where my weight was too far when i was running on the opposite side of my feet my glutes weren't activating my core wasn't as strong as it needed to be so it's kind of like we were fixing the root of the problem whereas every other doctor i talked to kind of was just like I, they didn't know, I guess, exactly what caused it or how I got it. Well, and I think you were the first person, and within that 30 minutes, mm -hmm. uh, what we didn't talk about is that five years ago, he, he broke his metatarsal, fifth metatarsal in, in his leg. So I think what happened over time, the mechanics got all out of whack. Mm -hmm. And you were able to take and say, look, from this, this is what happened, and this is what happened, and it was this chain of events that mm -hmm. was causing you know, this, this problem and everybody was trying to, to, to treat, you know, the problem versus, you know, the, the, the cause, root cause yeah. of it. And I think once we started addressing the foot and the chain reaction from the foot to the knee to the, the glutes to, I think all of a sudden it started, you know, coming mm -hmm. together and there's no one person out there because we saw a foot specialist, right? He, in fact, he had a surgery on his foot. We went to the hip doctors. We went to all these people and they were very specialized in their area. And you were the first person to put it all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no one's as obsessive compulsive as me. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so so you, you jump in. We start we start doing kind of the rehab and stuff. I, I throw the exercises out at you. Um, how how are you feeling when you like you jump in and you start doing deadlifts? And you've done this stuff before, but it was like you know very specific. As in, you need to be like this, and you need to be feeling this. How how are you feeling when you you started jumping into there? What was your headspace like once you started getting going with the program? Uh, I was almost kind of amazed that like I couldn't do anything. It felt like I couldn't run or anything. And then I get I get in the gym and I'm like able to do all these squats and stuff with like no pain. And then it was big uh, like fo just focusing on the glutes and stuff. So that also helped. Um, to go go further into that. So like I remember you saying this as well. Like you would email me and be like like you were surprised. Like oh I did a hundred you know 150 pound deadlift. I didn't feel anything kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, what was that like, I guess, like for coming from that power place of being disempowered and told to do nothing, like ev as you like put in more weight on, you added weight, did that like, did that kind of like harden your will a bit more? Was that, that what allowed you to be like, all right, cool. I can keep pushing here. Yeah, definitely. And then when I was feeling with no pain, that just honestly kind of made me just want to keep doing more and more of it. And, uh, when you kind of start, I guess when I first kind of start with the exercise, like it's kind of like testing and then once you get more used to it and stuff just doing it day in day out then i was able to like really like i guess concentrate like especially like my squats and stuff like on my actual like glute activation and everything um i, I always think like it's such an important point is this idea of like hey if you move well you won't get the op pain you may not be able to run well yet because you don't know how to do that but if you can move well in simple exercises, the pain should go away and you can just program your body to stop hurting itself. Um, and yeah, I was always kind of like, because your ability, your ability, I guess, as an athlete and just talented was you could look at something and you could change it really quickly. Um, so it never took you very long to be like, oh, cool, I need to do this. And then you would shift it and your body would change. But it was like there was a lag time between what your body was doing and what your brain could believe. It was like... Mm -hmm. You were always like, oh, am I doing that right? I'd, I'd be like, Chris, does it feel right? Like, it looks right, but does it feel right? Like, uh, it was almost like your body was doing it, but your brain couldn't believe that you were doing it. Yeah, that was a big thing I noticed, too, is, like, the mentally, I guess, side of just, like, focusing in and then really, like, going down for 10 seconds and then really, like, I guess, focusing. Because it's one of those injuries where it's, like, you literally, like, you can't just, like, rest and it, you have to, like, work hard mm. to uh, to get better from it. So, like, basically just day in, day out, just, like, working hard and then 
focusing really on actually what it does and how that'll help me improve on the field too. You know, yeah. what I thought was interesting is the video, right? First, a little skeptical, you know, you're in Australia and you're, you know, we're, we're over here in the United States, but, you know, he's sending the videos, you reviewing them, right? And then doing, you know, feedback that he'd be able to watch um, and then do the exercises and then send them to you. You do the feedback and then to where he got it perfect. And it was mm -hmm. that visualization of doing the exercises. And then I was here in Atlanta you know, who's watching the videos too, mm -hmm. watching his videos, <laughs> listening to your feedback, Chris, you got to do this. And, you know, I, I think that was, that, that was really uh, an eye opener for us in, in terms of being able to do the right exercise the right way. Yeah. And it really helps with all the, um, when, when you're doing the exercise, if you haven't done them yet and you're just watching, then you have kind of the OP, uh, like he, you send a video and then Jason literally like puts the video in slow motion and put arrows and points all like these little things that you don't even kind of notice until he's, he points them out. So that's how I you kind of... I always feel so horrible when I'm doing that. I'm always just like, hey, you're doing that like 80% right. So let me just spend the next <laughs> five minutes talking about the, the two little things that you're doing yeah. wrong. Even though you're doing most of it right, I'm just going to like really pick on these last two things. I feel like a really horrible, hypocritical mother just being like, no, do it. Do it perfect. I want you to do it perfect. Why can't you do it perfect? <laughs> I think um, that would what helps yeah. with the rehab, mm -hmm. right? and I yeah. really do, because it's like shooting a basket, right? a basketball. You can shoot the wrong way, and you're never going to get better because you're not practicing the right way. And what I felt with this, and what I was really excited again as a father, to sit here and watch him go through these exercises and watch the videos and start seeing him doing it right, I think only helped him with the mechanics and doing, you know. And it was stuff that you wouldn't just go for an hour. Right, see a therapist or whatever, and then and then go on. It was constant. He was constantly watching the videos, and I thought that was amazing. Well, it's it's interesting because that all that just gets born off like I would, you know, I'd see people in my clinic at at work, and then I'd show them an exercise, and then they forget it and they wouldn't do it right. Um, mm -hmm. And so then I'd be like, or they'd be like, I did it, but then I forgot how to do it. So then I'd shoot videos and just be like, here, now there's a video. You no longer have an excuse for that. <laughs> then they'd go it, and then. They would find the most amazing ways to interpret things that I had said, completely the opposite. I'd be like, you know what? You're 100% logically right. You could interpret that. I don't know how you've managed to do that exercise like that, but I gave you an instruction and you've done that. And then, yeah, doing the Skype thing gave me the opportunity to be like, oh, well, now I can just correct them in between the week. It's really just my obsessive compulsiveness being like, oh, cool. Now I can just control everything. <laughs> Remember you were doing the one exercise and you were doing it completely opposite. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you looked at the video being like, Chris, you're supposed to go towards uh -huh. the video and you were going opposite. So it, it really it stopped, right, this bad habit mm -hmm. and all of a sudden he was back on track. So And you showed it. was like, you know, Chris, just stop what you're doing yeah. and just let me show you how to do it again. Um, what does it say? Um, all right, so, so you're going through the rehab. Everything's going really, really well. Um, you jump out and you start running again. H how does that feel? How does it, how does it feel just to be back out and then running that, that first time? Uh, it felt pretty awesome. Like, I don't even know, I don't know really how to describe it. I just, it felt really good having like pretty much just like sweat just going down my face <laughs> and like my muscles getting fatigued and stuff. If that's like, you kind of miss that, I guess, when you, when you're away from the game so long. And it, it was like, I don't know. I kind of the first time I remember uh, going out and running, I was kind of like terrified on how on how it would go. But then I went out there, and then obviously, like it felt real good. So I just gained more and more confidence each time. Yeah, I was real terrified. We were taping them as you were running yeah. up the hill. And you, uh -huh. and you kept saying, "No, no, you need a bigger hill. No, 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 bigger hill." Uh -huh. Remember that? And we're like, we're like, oh, like, oh yeah, my yeah. god! Until we got the biggest hill we could find. Uh -huh. and, you know, we were real scared that it was like, oh my God, you can't you know, ease into it, Chris. And you're like, no, 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 yeah. push yourself. <laughs> so we yeah. big hill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was, I do remember that. That was like three iterations. It's like, still not steep enough. Still not steep <laughs> enough. <laughs> you need a bigger hill. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, the last thing I really wanted to ask you about was like, so the, the applied metrics that we did, right? Um, and the, those things like in the backyard and stuff. Um, how do you feel like, so the thing that I'm always interested about that and the thing I always want to say is like, I want you to do stuff in your rehab that is 10 times harder than you do on the field. Stuff that like is going to push you way further than anything you might find than when you were playing soccer in a game. How do you feel like, do you feel like those pliers and that stuff really prepared you for that? And like those, those extreme mobility things we did with your leg up, kicking into the chair kind of stuff. Um, how, how do you feel from that perspective? Do you feel like you are 
completely prepared for anything that soccer can throw at you. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, exactly. Pretty much what you just said. And uh, two, I felt uh, I felt what well, I remember before I had or before we did all the exercises too. like just in, uh, I don't know how to say it. after the exercise, after all the exercises that we did, I felt like running was almost like easier because like I felt my glutes were getting activated instead of all of it being my quads. So it just everything kind of almost felt easier and I almost felt more like athletic, I guess even though I hadn't even played in like 12 months or really run or done anything. But I felt when I went out there, I was like running is almost like easier now because I got all these other uh, parts of my body like activating and helping. Um, one, of, one of my other clients who's a soccer player as well, at um, Tyler, he was, he was saying um, that like all his friends, because he'd been playing with OP for a while and all his friends were like, oh, wow, like, they hadn't seen him play before. And they're like, you're a completely different player. Like, you know, like, because he'd become like a heady, kind of clever player because he couldn't move mm -hmm. as much. And then he was like, they were like, yeah, like, you're cutting, like, you're, you're, like, making these intense moves and stuff. And it's like, and he was like, he was just saying how he felt like it was all so much easier. He was more balanced. Uh -huh. He didn't have to, he wasn't struggling as much. Like, he could just flow through things. While even when he was healthy before, he felt like, you know, he always felt a little out of control almost. Yeah, that definitely. I felt even I felt like more I played even my coach uh when I was doing my stuff, he was like, I'm surprised at how like athletic you look for like having having taken off basically twelve months and I was just like it's from all this strengthening stuff I'm doing. I'm coming like an overall better athlete too from it. Uh that is well, so good to hear. <laughs> That's, I think it comes down to mechanics, right? I mean, you. I remember the first thing when we were taping the running, you're like, oh, he's a, what do you call him, a strider or something. Glider. A glider. Glider, yeah. Because he wasn't had the legs high enough. And get so, my knees high enough. You know, there were certain byproducts of, of, of having good mechanics, you know, that I think is hopefully going to help him, you know, be faster and stronger um, in addition to being, you know, uh, a better, you know, applying that in soccer. Mm, no, no, absolutely. Um, all right, so last, last question um, I always ask this one is, if anyone's watching this, they've got to the end of this video, um, and what would you like, what would you say to them? What would you, and I'd, I'd love to hear it from both, both perspectives, but what would you say to them? What would be your message kind of thing? Uh, the biggest thing is uh, to stick with it, and basically kind of every day kind of do those exercises. Like, sometimes it'll hurt too, but uh, basically when it kind of hurts, it just keep going and then like try to instead of instead of it hurting try to like fix it while you're going because I remember the ab wheel too where I was doing it and I kind of felt a little bit of pain and I was like oh maybe maybe I should take off kind of the next day and you were just like no 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 just like keep pushing keep pushing through the pain almost sometimes well, to, to clarify that not necessarily push through the pain but to like the pain is a signal right you're yeah you're uh -huh. doing, yeah yeah, and yeah. Fix and, it and then, yeah, and then keep, you fix it. It's like, keep going, like, don't really, like, give up. Yeah, it's almost like you can't be the victim to it. You've got to, like, mm -hmm. you got to be like, nah, this is like, you know, I'm doing something wrong, I'll make it better. Like, rest will not get me out of this. Yeah, yeah. And the mental side, too, I remember it was, it was one of the first few sessions that's on the videos when you're saying the mental side to where you got to just kind of stop, like, kind of block, uh, block out, like, the, like, pain receptors, you kind of said, where mm -hmm. it's, before I was like noticing, I was focusing on the pain. And you, I remember watching that video and after I was kind of like, kind of trying to block out the pain, I guess, for the mental side of it. Mm -hmm. And then I felt that really helped a lot. Yeah, well then you, if you can block out the pain, you can focus on the movement, which is gonna fix mm -hmm. you, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah my, my message would be that, that there's hope, <clears throat> right? I mean, as I said, we started out where originally we thought it was just a muscle pull. Then it was turned into a sports hernia. Then it turned into something else and all these different doctors. And eventually it was like, well, then it's rest and, you know, be, be off it for six months, you know, potentially two years. Right. And, and, and you know, he's a young, you know, 19 years old and he's got dreams of, of going further. And, and it just, it was terrible. Right. To mm -hmm. hear the doctor say it could be two years. And to me, the, the message is that there is a cure out there. If you do the right things and do it the right way, right, you can solve this. And it, it, it's not like you have to go to surgery. It's not like, you know, that you're going to have to sit out for two years. But if you go through a program and you strengthen it, you fix the mechanics, there's definitely hope, you know, for, for people out there with it. Awesome. Awesome. Um, thank you so much. And it, it was it was such a fun, it was a fun time going through it as well. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. But yeah, thank you so much for doing this. And anyone watching this, yeah, uh, hopefully you guys can take something away from it. But yeah, um, thank you so much. And you guys have a great day. Excellent. Thanks. Hey there. That video was probably really complicated. OP is really complicated.
So why don't you let me explain it to you in person? Book in for a free 20 minute Skype consult. I can assess you, tell you what OP is, you can ask me as many questions as you like. We can go into detail about the Skype process and how it works, and we can start working on the things that you need to do to fix your OP and get back to your life. So please, book in for a free session, it's completely obligation free, and let's get started.